um, I am in the car driving because I am late heading to a little breastfeeding workshop that um, my aunt is having at her job and she asked me to be a speaker so I kind of want to document it I don't know if they're gonna let me record I'm an actor but I'm just filming this intro in case I'm able to record y'all I was trying to prepare last night like write little prompts so that I could have my thoughts together and in case I get nervous that you know I have a little no car to remind me what I'm, I need to stay what I need to say but I fell asleep I was so tired I fell asleep woke up with these damn um, index cards right on my bed <laughs> so and then this morning I have to get my boys ready get the baby situated then get myself ready so like I am literally like rushing 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 so I feel unprepared but um, I'm just going to speak from the heart <laughs> you know tell my story tell my breastfeeding journey um, share my breastfeeding journey and see how that goes so if I'm able to record y'all don't judge me I am not good at public speaking but I love stuff like this so I want to like challenge myself to be more outspoken outspoken it's way different than just picking up a camera and running my mouth so and I don't think it's a big event or anything because it's literally at her job I think it's like a little workshop I'm hoping that a lot of people are there I don't know I don't know what I'm I actually literally don't know what I'm walking into I just agreed to do it so we're gonna see y'all anyways if I'm able to record I'm gonna show some of that if not I'll just come back on here and tell y'all how it went but I hope I'm able to record my aunt wanted me there 10 minutes before 10 and it's 9 47 and these cars are driving so slow my goodness okay y'all i'm about to pull up to my aunt's job she works right off the waterfront the problem right now is going to be finding a parking oh is this a parking did i get lucky i got lucky y'all got a parking this is perfect all right okay I'm here oh, shit let me let me park better get out of the road okay I'm here it's 9 53 so let me run inside so she don't tell me I'm too late I'm excited but I'm nervous Okay, so I'm a mom of three, a one-year-old, a two-year-old, he'll be three next month, and a five-year-old. I am um, a little backstory on who I am. Um, no. By profession, I'm an accountant. I graduated from St. Croix Educational Complex, so I was a tutorial of my class. I went on to Barry to get my bachelor's in accounting. Then I went to Liberty University to get my master's on I worked in accounting for a little bit, but then I got pregnant with my first son. I was living in Florida and that was it. I moved on to other things and motherhood is what actually led me to my passion and accounting just wasn't it. So from there I became a certified yoga instructor, a certified doula, a certified womb wellness specialist, and I'm working on my Yoni Steaming Facilitator certification. And I know it's a womb specialist. <laughs> a womb wellness specialist. So I pretty much focus on women's health from a holistic aspect. Okay. So anything that um, anything that has to do with your womb care, your uterus, okay. pregnancy, um, just overall women's health and womb wellness. So there's so many different aspects of our life that affects our women that a lot of women do not think about on a daily basis. So I wanted to dive deeper into that. I've been on my health journey for a very long time. I've always been very health conscious and 
the more I learn, the more I implement those things into my life. Mm -hmm. So I want I wanted to be able to share with other women you know, what I've been doing in my journey to help them. And um, through that, because I live my life from a holistic aspect, I started digging into herbalism as well. So in short, why I say that motherhood led me to my passion is because I decided to start my own business. So I'm the creator and owner of Gems Holistic. I make natural skin care products, hair care products, baby products, as well as womb wellness products. So um, womb massage oils uh, and herbal teas for like fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, um, hormonal imbalance, infertility, all that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, life be happening, so I have to shut down my business for a year, and then last year I started back up, and it's been going very well. So, what else? Yeah, that's about it for me. <laughs> um, this is about breastfeeding, so I want to kind of more stick on that topic. And for me personally, breastfeeding has been not only beneficial for myself, but of course for my children. I've had three home births. I've never had a birth in the hospital. Having <laughs> having my child in the hospital was always like foreign to me because of how I was raised. My mom had me at home. I've been surrounded by women who had babies at home. I've only seen my mother and other women breastfeed. So that's all I was ever exposed to. In fact, I don't even think I knew what formula was until I got older. So not breastfeeding was never an option for me. In my mind, I have a baby, I have to breastfeed. That was it. <laughs> so with my first, um, I didn't really experience any challenges breastfeeding. So with my first, my milk came down strong. Like it was so much that I was getting engorged that I had to pump to just get some relief. And when that happened, like, you know, I did the work of depressions, massages, and then come to just get some release, and then I was able to freeze that milk. Okay. But I never had a moment where it was hard to breastfeed or I was experiencing, um, like, chapped nipples and it was painful. Now, what I would say is one of the things, one of the benefits of breastfeeding that we don't really think about is it helps contract our uterus back down to its normal size. So when you're breastfeeding and you feel that pain, I don't know mm. if many of you <laughs> have experienced that, you feel that pain, that's your uterus actually contracting back down to its normal size. So although it's painful, it's good. Okay. You know, and um, you know, that only lasts oh so long, it's not going to last forever. So that's one benefit for your womb health as it pertains to breastfeeding. Another is when we're pregnant, our estrogen levels spike up, which is normal because that's necessary in order to sustain the pregnancy. Once you have the baby, your estrogen levels stay risen. But when you're breastfeeding, it, continue, it starts to lower. So breastfeeding actually helps regulate your hormones after you have a baby. So that's good for post postpartum health. So a lot of women, we experience postpartum depression, and a lot of, like you're emotional, you don't know why, or anything. And now there's a lot of aspects that triggers that, but one of the things is the unbalanced hormones in our body, and breastfeeding helps to regulate and balance all of that. Um, another thing about, a lot, uh, I've spoken to a lot of women who, have challenges breastfeeding mm -hmm. and one of the things that I started looking more into is the difference between women who have who give birth naturally and vaginally versus those who either get an epidural and have a c-section now like I said I do everything from a holistic standpoint I do not judge anyone for their decision but I always look at cause and effect and what's the root of issues so a lot of women who undergo a C-section are prone to have difficulties breastfeeding because our body is so intelligent that our womb is connected to our brain. So if the baby comes out via C-section, it doesn't send that signal to our brain that we just gave birth. So now your body isn't producing milk yet. It's not, it's not starting that process. 
Because when you give birth vaginally, there's actually a chemical that's released that sends that message to your brain to say, okay, you just had a baby, now it's time to start working on that milk. So that is why a lot of women who have um, their babies via C-section initially would have that difficult start in breastfeeding and feeling like, oh, my milk isn't coming down, what to do? And the first thing the hospital is gonna do is say, hey, oh, here, give them more like being induced after it, because I also feel like if you do that, induce your body not naturally. Exactly, going to so now you're, that's, that's what I was gonna say too. So now if you're induced or even have an epidural, it shuts down everything. Yeah. <laughs> so now the communication between your womb and your brain has stopped. It's just like whatever you do, do not let them induce you. Do not let them force you to gain the you. Exactly. And that's why I support and like advocate for natural birth. Now I'm not saying if you're high risk or have difficulties that is an actual emergency that don't do what you have to do, but that is why preventative care is always the best care. And that's where nutrition comes in, that's where your lifestyle comes in. And from experience, I could tell you that I ate the healthiest with my second son. I'm vegan, I'm plant-based, but you could be vegan and unhealthy. <laughs> Let's get that straight. So like with my first son, I was eating a lot of processed vegan stuff and like because I was having such a hard time mentally with that pregnancy that I wasn't really focusing on what I was eating and how I was eating. But my second, I was already transitioning into, like I did the doula stuff and you know, I was doing more research, I had done experience postpartum, so you know I'm digging in to see why did I experience this, what is going on? So with my second son, I was more aware and more educated and I ate very healthy with my second son. And I, to this day could tell you the difference between both of them. My first son, he liked a lot of junk. Like he wants the chips, the crackers, the vegan pizza and all of that. My second son, he would eat fruits all day. He would just one after the next, he would eat all the fruits. I have to like bribe my first son into eating fruits. My third pregnancy wasn't the healthiest in terms of eating wise, but that was because of issues beyond my control. Mm -hmm. But uh, that alone shows, again, the difference between how it was even between all three pregnancies and how they came out to be. Because my, my one-year-old right now, he still breastfeeds. He exclusively breastfeeds. And I personally yeah. exclusively yeah. breastfeed up until one because the baby's digestive system cannot handle anything but breast milk up until one. And after you give birth, that is still developing. So a lot of times we, um, by six months or whatever, we want to start giving them baby food or giving them a little fry here and look. Their digestive system is being shocked and it then turns into getting issues like eczema. They're throwing up a lot. And even if you don't even see no symptoms right then and there, in the long run, you can start to see those things because remember, the digestive system is still developing. So it turned out to have like gut health issues in the long run. So, for the, just to stay on the safe side, I always exclusively breastfeed for a year, and then after the year, then I start giving them fruits. So, I last give them anything in between, like the breastfeeding for the year, or you just, just strictly breastfeed? Just breastfeed. breastfeed. Oh, I mean, it sounds crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My last son strictly breast. No water either. No water. They don't need water. They're getting everything they need from the breast milk. How you eat affects their sickness too because that's our next comparison between my son. My first son would get sick quicker than my second son. And even when both of them get sick, the second one gets well much quicker. So when they get the cold or the cough or stinky nose, it's not necessarily a bad thing because that's your body's um, natural response to fight whatever is trying to attack it, it's trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. But it's how fast you recover is what determines the state of your health. Six weeks is not enough time, Six weeks is not enough time to, to recover to, mm -hmm. from birth. Like, that's like it took you it took you nine months to make this baby. There's no way your body is ready to enter back into regular life after six weeks. But again, that's how they designed the system. And 
that is why when I became a mother, like mentally I couldn't, I literally switched my life around because I just mentally couldn't do that. I could not just, mm -hmm. after three months, go back to work. I resigned from my job. <laughs> I was looking for a work from home job. I mean, thankfully things worked out in my favor because I was so determined not to have to leave my baby. So after getting the work from home job, then I started my own business and I've never been back to a nine to five since three babies later so I've been able to exclusively breastfeed and keep my children home with me I'm not saying it's easy but I know that it's best for them so I make that sacrifice you know as women we have so much on our plates especially when you're going through pregnancy and you don't have the support and then when the baby comes you still don't have the support and then you have to just do things that you normally wouldn't really want to do because you, you're responsible for this new life. Is never done. It's never done. So I am like, that's why I became a doula too because like my heart did just kind of like melt a little bit when I Mother. see a pregnant woman like really going through it mm -hmm. and don't have support. Down here is different okay. because St. Croix, the Virgin Islands does not support home births the way they should. Yeah. Okay, like you have a home birth, you basically that say, I just didn't make it to the hospital and I had my baby at home. Mm -hmm. With my daughter, <laughs> I stayed home until I was like six and seven times. When I went to the hospital, they were like, why are you staying home so long? Should... I just felt more comfortable in the comfort of oh, my own home. home. So by the time I got to the hospital, I was on six and seven times. Yes, that gives the hospital less time and to I didn't want to be laid down. I could you have know, been home walking around. Down, down, which is yeah. working against your body. You should be able to move around, yeah. walk around, and that's what dance, swim, hips. I stayed in for 17 mm -hmm. hours. So I just got home a little while ago. Um, I was so busy rushing out the house that I forgot to bring my backup battery. So as I was recording, I don't even know how the clip look. I don't know if I was in the frame properly. I don't know if I was talking loud enough, but at some point my camera died. <laughs> so whatever footage y'all see, I don't know how long it is. I don't know if I'm going to keep all of it in. But, um, okay, what was I saying? Because I am not trying to stand here holding this camera. My arms is tired. I'm hungry. About to go and eat me some lunch. But I was saying that at some point my camera died. And whatever footage y'all see, just know that's not how it ended. But it was a great event. It was very small and intimate. And... I enjoyed myself at the end of it I felt happy like full like joyful and it's just confirmation I'm always getting confirmation that birth work is truly my passion it is a labor of love for me and birth work is not just about being a doula and being physically there while someone is giving birth it's about sharing information being an advocate supporting in any way possible throughout pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. And speaking at this breastfeeding workshop was part of that. That is sharing information. I was able to share my personal journey. I was able to share information about breastfeeding from a holistic aspect because I'm always gonna do everything I do from a holistic aspect. I was actually kind of reserved about doing it because I know that I wasn't going to go in there with statistics and um, the medical side of breastfeeding and you know what doctors or these certified lactations the approach doctors and certified lactations would take because I'm not in I don't live from a medical mindset I live through experience through nature through doing things from a holistic standpoint so I was a kind of reserved because the workshop was held by WIC. The point of the matter is everyone was very receptive, everybody was very engaged and I personally enjoyed myself. I enjoyed talking to the pregnant mamas there and it's definitely something I would do again and overall it's funny that I even did this because one of the things that I want to start doing in the near future are holding 
um, workshops or seminars regarding womb wellness, regarding natural birth, because I really, 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 really want to start encouraging women to trust themselves, to give birth naturally, and possibly just at home, because I've been hearing so many horror stories, even the story about the young lady oh my goodness I can't even talk about it because I started reading the article and I just couldn't finish reading it listen I don't even know what to say about that story it just really like pains my heart like y'all stop having your babies in these hospitals they have medicalized birth they have turned birth into a medical procedure and it is not if y'all know what I'm referring to about the young lady who was given birth, I think it was in Atlanta, I believe. The, oh, I can't even say it. The words can't even come out my mouth because it's so disturbing and it makes me so upset. Anyways, I digress. I just hope to do more stuff like this in the near future. I want it to be able to be kind of a one-on-one -on -one vibe in a very small group small setting to be able to educate women share information answer questions help them get rid of that fear that they have surrounding birth natural birth home birth breastfeeding and just doing things from a holistic aspect doing things in accordance to nature anyways i don't want this to be a long video i just wanted to come in here to wrap this video up and let you all know that the event was great it was successful and i enjoyed it and i am just truly blessed and grateful to be able to share my knowledge my journey and just overall information with people so that they can better themselves they can better their lives and it can help them on their own pregnancy birth and postpartum journey and as always to all of my melanated women watching protect your womb by any means necessary y'all when i say that i say it from the core and depths of my soul because i know what i'm saying when i say protect your womb how that woman had to oh how they mm, how they handled that lady in that hospital while she was giving birth that is part of protecting your womb you don't want shit like that to be happening to you to all my melanated women out there protect your womb by any means necessary and to everyone watching protect your peace by any means necessary i wish you all love light and prosperity and you'll see me in my next video